where the Indian and Pacific continental plates meet. Cheering against each other, they thrust snowy peaks up into the sky. Mount Cook looks tremendous. The white of the September snow glistens in the early morning sun and contrasts with the deep blue backdrop of sky. Jack and Bonnie Wynn, only 12 or so hours from the tower blocks of LA, are glad they came. Well, I've flown over a lot of mountains before, but that's the first time I've ever flown through them. We're gonna get on the bus and go up to the village. 1884 saw the opening of the first Hermitage Hotel at Mount Cook. At least five days were needed for the return journey and a day of sightseeing. You got there by hiring a horse for around 10 shillings a day. From there, it was all downhill. Today, the Hermitage is only minutes away by coach from the Mount Cook Airport. It's hard to believe that just a couple of days ago we were back in the States. Flying down here was like flying over Europe. Nobody was home. The Kiwis call this Hillary country because over there on Mount Cook is where Sir Edmund Hillary trained before he conquered Mount Everest. I think we'll go have a bite to eat over in the Hermitage and then we're going to go down and do what they call Instant Hillary. Instant Hillary? This is instant hillary. Instant hillary means flying instead of climbing. And when you're pushing 60, flying beats climbing every time. Besides, over 50,000 other visitors do it every year. This plane is especially equipped with skis to land up on the snow on Tasman Glacier. The same pioneering spirit that spurred Rudolf Wigley, founder of the Mount Cook Line, to such great heights, was truly present in his son, Henry or, as he was better known, Harry. Harry was captain of the New Zealand ski team and often made the long, hard slog up the glacier to enjoy one, but all too short, breathtaking run down. If only he could fly up. Nearly 50 years after his father had driven to Mount Cook, Harry made the first landing by plane on the Tasman Glacier. He had invented the retractable ski Mike Charlie Tango, no known joining traffic, surface wind 1305 knots.
with some flight. Oh. Isn't this beautiful? I have never seen anything like this before. Look at all those beautiful mountains up there. Anyway, here, we here we are, right up on top of Tasman Glacier. This is amazing. Oh, beautiful. That is Mount Cook, the, uh, the highest mountain oh, yes. in Australasia, 12,349 feet above sea level. Mm. Next peak you can see is Mount Tasman. That's New Zealand's second highest mountain. That one's 11,475 feet. We're actually standing on 1,500 feet of ice beneath us here, believe it or not. Right, right, right here. On the Tasman Glacier, we're 6,500 feet above sea level here. The, uh, the glacier itself is 18 miles long, moving slowly down the valley about uh, 12 to 18 inches a day. Is that right? She's a, she's a beautiful scene. It's, you're virtually on top of the world. Yeah. To move down the valley a bit faster, the way to go is on skis. You can hire everything you need right down to the sunglasses and be landed by ski plane on the upper slopes of the glacier. There you can join a guided party and take a route down that even beginners find easy. Or for more advanced skiers, there's ample scope for more difficult solo runs. Is there anyone from anywhere who wouldn't be impressed with the stillness, the grandeur? 18 miles long, a solid river of ice, moving slowly, maybe a few inches a day, down the valley. Okay, folks, uh, we'll get you back on board again now, and we'll climb out to the west and show you a bit more of our beautiful scenery. Okay? Good on you. It's painless, enjoyable, and out of this world. Some call it the world's number one scenic flight. Stepping out in casual clothes, 6,000 feet above worry level. A few impressive photographs later, and you're relaxing in the ski plane on your way back to the airport. If you haven't done it yet, you've got to. For your travel experiences will never be complete until you do the Tasman Experience.